Hi, welcome back. You've probably seen this guy before. If not, let me introduce you to Charles Darwin, the man behind the theory of evolution. He's the one who explained how we evolved over thousands of years going from this to this. Pretty epic, right? But what if I told you Darwin's ideas about evolution could be applied far beyond biology? Turns out some really smart people thought, hey, what if we could use evolution to solve problems? And they came up with something called genetic algorithms. A way to use survival of the fittest, mutations and randomness to find solutions to tricky problems. Let's dive into a classic problem that can be solved using a genetic algorithm, the knapsack problem. Imagine you have a knapsack and a bunch of objects. Each object has a value and a weight. The goal is simple. Fit the objects with the highest value into the knapsack without exceeding its weight limit. We can represent the knapsack as a list of boolean values, each representing an object. A value of 1 means the object is in the knapsack, and 0 means it's not. The first step in genetic algorithm is to create a population, in this case, random lists of zeros and ones. Once the population is ready, we need to assess how well each individual is doing. This is where the fitness function comes in. It calculates the combined value of the objects in the knapsack. But the value is not the only thing that we need to consider in our fitness function. We also need to keep track of the weight. If the weight exceeds the limit, the fitness score becomes zero, because that solution isn't valid. After evaluating all individuals, we move on to selection. This step chooses the best fitting individuals to be parents for the next generation. In our example, we're gonna use roulette selection. Each individual has a chance to be selected based on its fitness score. The better the score, the higher the chance of being chosen. Once parents are selected, we create children by combining parts of their genotypes. The most common way to do this is with one-point crossover. A random point is selected and the genetic material from each parent is swapped at that point to create offspring. To maintain genetic diversity, we introduce mutation by flipping some of the bits in the list. Remember to be careful with the mutation rate. If it's too high, the algorithm might never find a good solution. Because the population would be too random. We repeat all the steps mentioned before over multiple generations until we find a satisfactory solution. One thing to keep in mind is that there's a lot of randomness involved in genetic algorithms. So each time you run it, the outcome might be different. It's not about finding the perfect solution every time. It's about making smart guesses over and over until you get a good result. Okay, now it's time to run the algorithm and see the results. The algorithm managed to find a solution pretty fast, and I think it's the best solution available, so let's move on to the next example. Now I'm gonna try to create an algorithm that is going to be able to guess the word you pass to it. Just like before, we initialize the population with random lists of letters. Next step is evaluating every individual by counting how many letters are in the correct spot. Then we need to choose parents for individuals in the next generation. For that, we are going to use roulette selection like in the knapsack problem. Next step is one point crossover and lastly we are going to mutate the children. Best individuals are going to be locked to console for us to track the progress. Let's run it. Okay, it found the word we were looking for, but let's be honest, the performance is not the best. So let's try to optimize it. The biggest slowdown comes from doing all the calculations inside Python's interpreter. Python is great, but it's not exactly a speed demon when it comes to loops. To fix that, we'll use NumPy. If you're new to it, NumPy might seem a little bit intimidating at first, but trust me, it's really a game changer. NumPy is a library that uses functions written in C, making it super fast. It also allows for something called vectorization, which basically means doing calculations on the entire arrays in one go instead of looping over everything. This means your code can run blazingly fast without Python holding it back. Let's refactor the code step by step. Instead of creating individuals one by one, we'll generate the entire population in a single function call. The output is a two-dimensional array where each row is a randomly generated word, and the length of each row matches the target word. The fitness function evaluates the whole population at once, no more looping. Using NumPy, it compares each individual to the target word across the entire array. By specifying the axis parameter, it processes row by row, outputting the number of correct letters for each individual in one go. This is where vectorization really shines. Instead of building an array of probabilities with a loop or list comprehension, we can simply divide the fitness array by its sum. 
Choosing parents is now a breeze with NumPy's choice function. It selects all the parents based on calculated probabilities in one step. This function is a little trickier. To perform crossover, we first generate random split points to divide the parents' genotypes. Then we create a mask, a list of boolean values where true means a gene comes from parent 1 and false means it comes from parent 2. Using NumPy's where function, we combine the genes based on this mask efficiently generating the new children without loops. The final step is merging the new children into a single array and returning it. Let's see the change in performance. With these changes, the algorithm runs much faster, because nearly all the loops are gone. Instead of Python chugging through every step, NumPy handles it in optimized C code. Sure, the code might look a little less beginner-friendly, but the performance boost is totally worth it. That would be the end of this video. If you enjoyed, leave a like and subscribe to help me grow my channel. If you have any questions or suggestions what you would want to see in the upcoming videos, feel free to share them in the comments section below. Thank you for watching and see you next time.